So we're going to begin here today with a one inch flat headed brush and I will dip the bottom third of it into a little bit of water then proceed to wipe off the excess. I am doing this to ensure that our paint stays wet for a longer period of time and we will start with some titanium white, the smallest tint of Mars black and ultramarine blue. We'll mix the three of them very well that way we don't have little areas that are more blue, some that are a bit more white and then we'll start applying that to the top of our cloud in the center of the canvas. From there, we'll make it a little bit darker and a little bit more blue, mix that up, and we'll apply that right under the initial application. You can see that it's a bit rough at this point, but we can soften it by just moving over top all of it horizontally with a very light stroke. Then yet again, we make it darker, adding that Mars black, that ultramarine blue. We apply that right under our previous application. So we're slowly building a gradient from a light gray at the top to a darker bluish gray towards the bottom. And then we go back into the titanium white and mix a new brighter pigment. This is essentially for the open sky and we're going to apply this down towards the horizon, slowly build it up towards our larger cloud. And then once we have it essentially worked in for the most part, we're going to start blending and I'm just doing a very soft stroke. All of our initial paint should still be wet because our brush was damp and you can see that I'm allowing little portions of the cloud to kind of bend and work their way down. That's just going to make the cloud feel a little bit more dynamic and you can even incorporate a bit of this lighter pigment in towards the top just to really reiterate that gradient. Now I'm also going to open up a couple of spots within the trees so we will see some sky in there which I'm applying right here. Again following the same rules we have that slightly darker cloud on top, we have the open sky on the bottom, we have a soft blend between the two and the blend can even be softer than what we had in the middle because you don't want to draw too much attention. From there I'm switching over to my filbert brush and this is fantastic because it can create a sharper application with the head of it, but you can also use the rounded corners for blends. Here I'm picking up some sap green, a small amount of Mars black, but it's quite strong, so it was fairly dominant in there, and titanium white. We're essentially trying to mix up a fairly desaturated green right now, which is why we're incorporating all of the titanium white and Mars black. You just don't want to typically work with the same vibrancy of the hue that you get out of the tube. So we're just slowly diluting that back and forth. And then I'm going to apply a base layer for my trees. Now, you might think this is a, a fall painting. This is an autumn piece. Why green? We're just using green as a base here to have a pigment to show through to a point. However, we are going to incorporate a lot of yellow, a lot of orange, um, reds. So don't worry about that. You can also see that I'm essentially tapping the brush around a lot of the sky. That way you have that very unique edging. It kind of looks like there is individual pieces of foliage or clusters of foliage. And I do that by essentially just doing a little tap, maybe a little drag, but I try to make a very small mark and they can get a bit bigger as you get closer to you via perspective, but it's essentially just something that you want to look fairly randomized. And we can see again, some of the cloud showing through that. Now we're going to head over to the other side of the canvas and do something a little bit similar, but it's not going to go as high up and that's going to make this look a little bit more unique, not entirely mirrored and typically making these unique pieces is really important for making something look just a little bit more realistic, right? So with that, I have a fairly rough application for quite a bit of that. Not a bad thing at all. Leaving the brush strokes really will just add texture, but I am mixing up a darker variant of that color right now, adding in that Mars black. Here now we have a fan brush and I'm not going to make this wet because if you do, it condenses the bristles. Here I want just a wide variety of markings. So I'll grab a little bit of paint, but not too much because that too can condense the bristles. So just a small amount. And now I'm going to tap on all of this texture. This is essentially going to be the shadows being shown through the trees. It's 
still a base layer so it's not meant to look neat and tidy it's essentially a part of the foundation and you can see that i'm rotating my brush quite dramatically i'm doing this so that i don't have the same set of lines kind of working through all of my foliage and i'm also not pressing the entirety of the brush into the greenery i'm choosing different portions of the fan brush to further diversify the applications and make them all unique. I'm also going to go back over the bottom a couple of times because that area will be a bit darker and will therefore have more shadows in general. But once we have that and once it's dry, we're going to go back to mixing up a lighter green. This green's actually going to be brighter than all of our previous greens. However, we still don't want it to be hyper saturated so we are working in that mars black now we will grab the fan brush and make it wet this is going to as noted before condense those bristles and now we're going to be able to make larger markings with it not as many but larger which is great because it'll give us individual pieces of foliage here you can see that there are about 10 areas that stand out from the brush rather than the hundred that occurred before and that's why i really love this brush in the past, I would have to use multiple fan brushes, some that were a bit more stiff, some that were softer. Here, this is from our channel's brush set, which you can actually get in the video description, but it essentially lets you do both. So you don't have to jump back and forth and you have a bit more uh, creative input in how your paint is applied. That said, I'm applying this typically around the edges. So where the majority of the light from the sky can come down onto the trees, that's going to be on the top for the most part, but it's also going to be around the openings, like what you can see right here. And I'm progressively making brighter greens, building it up and creating that depth. And that's really how you're going to create a lot of depth in your foliage. I like to start with a mid value for the true base layer, a lot of brush strokes in it. Then we do a second layer, which is darker. It's all of those very sharp little shadow pieces. And then we go in with our next layer, which is these tapped pieces of individual foliage. And then we just progressively make that brighter. That said, you probably want to wait for each layer to dry before you go in and add another one. That is just going to ensure that your painting doesn't become muddy and that all of your markings still look nice and sharp. Here, getting those sharp markings is quite important. And here you can also see that I'm not pressing the entirety of the fan brush into the painting. We were still just using portions of it. Now, as you can see, we have two new pigments on our palette that includes a cadmium red and a cadmium yellow. We're going to include equal mixtures in our current mix. Then we'll grab some Mars black, probably about one tenth that and mix it in. This is going to give us a bit of a darker, slightly desaturated orange and a great pigment for our base layer of our next set of trees. Now I'm going to start applying it with the filbert brush. And again, along the side of all of the trees there that essentially overlaps the sky, I'm doing a little bit of a tap and drag effect, leaving slight openings so you can still see portions of that sky showing through. And what we're essentially trying to do is create the implication of foliage. So little leaves sticking out here and there, especially in the foreground as we get towards the back, we try to create more of a cluster of foliage so areas don't stick out as prominently and our applications get slightly smaller. Now here I'm working back in and starting to play with all of that open sky, that negative space, you can have leaves kind of floating within the air. Perhaps the wind takes them and it's blowing them around, though you do want to consider leading lines in these applications, all of your applications, all of your strokes, they do create lines and they create movement. And you want to make sure that a lot of those taps and those drags kind of lead the eye back in towards the center of the painting. Now I'm going to apply a little bit of this over on the right hand side and I'm starting at the bottom slowly working my way up as I get towards us, so closer to us in the painting. I'm going to create larger 
clusters, but I'm also going to make them more intricate. I'm going to create more openings in them. I'm going to try to diversify the shapes and the clusters that we have as well. So you can see that a lot of our applications are significantly more spaced out. And then as I wait for all of that to dry, I'm going back over my previous applications with additional paint. And we're just doing that because this current mix doesn't have any titanium white and it's fairly thin. So we have to do multiple layers with it, especially when we're working on top of the green. And it's best to do multiple layers when the previous layer has dried, at least when you're trying to build up the thickness and the opacity of a pigment. So there's a lot of waiting between that. It's fine though, because we can kind of just jump back and forth between the sides as one dries. Then we're going to apply some fallen leaves towards the sides of our road, at least the base layer. Again, we have a lot of work to do with all of these orange applications, but it's very small in the distance. It gets larger as it gets closer to us. It isn't actually getting larger. It's just that it looks like it's getting larger because of perspective. And here you can see we're heading back to our mix. Now we do need a darker pigment. So very similar to what we did with the green. We start with that brush stroke heavy initial application. It's kind of a mid value. Then we move into something a lot darker for our shadows and our texture. We do that of course with the fan brush and the fan brush is fully dry right now. So we're going to get a lot of applications with these taps. You can also see there's some of that really nice afternoon lighting coming into the canvas right now. I love that, especially with pieces like this. It really gets me in the uh, atmosphere, you know? So with that, here we are just going in with these taps. Again, only about a third of the brush is tapping down onto the canvas. I'm applying it for the most part towards the bottom of the foliage and where the leaves have fallen just because that's going to be where the darker areas actually are, where the top has a lot more light. It can work around the leaves. It can work through the leaves. Now we do need a lighter mixture. So while that dries, I'll mix up our orange. And this time I'm using a lot of our yellow and I'm even using some titanium white you essentially wanted a more red dominant initial mix because you were working mars black in there and mars black and titanium white or rather and uh, cadmium yellow can render a green the red stops that from happening but here because we have so much titanium white and we still have some red we can incorporate a little bit of mars black but you do want to be careful in yellow heavy mixtures that said, now we do make our fan brush wet. That way we can dense those bristles. We can get those larger applications. So we'll start tapping these in as well. I'm going to begin towards the top of our foliage, and then we can work our way in, work our way back, work our way down. We're also not applying this over the entirety of what we put down with the base layer because you do want areas to show through you do want all of that previously applied a darker texture to still be notable to a point so don't overdo it and i definitely recommend a less is more approach and attitude towards this application because you can always go back and add more and that's a fairly easy process. It's not as easy to take away these fairly highlighted leaves, right? So just like that, I think we are starting to build a nice aesthetic on the left hand side. We're going to hop over to the right hand side, do something very similar predominantly working on the area that is closest to the sky. It's a little counterintuitive because it's the opposite side to what we just did on the left-hand side because the right-hand side of the left-hand side of the trees is the area that is closest to the light, whereas the opposite on the other side. I know it sounds like a very convoluted sentence, but I think you can see what I mean. That said, now we're hopping down into the bottom, delivering those highlights there as well. And we'll go back to our mix, start creating something even brighter. So significantly more titanium white, which is nice because it means that our pigment will naturally be thicker and we won't have to do as much layering. You can even see some of the texture showing through here. And texture in acrylics is something that is typically quite difficult to achieve. You have to use a lot of paint. It's doable, but as acrylic paint dries, it will 
essentially lose its fullness by about um, two thirds. So if you apply a lot of texture and then you come back to it, you know, 30 minutes later and you look at it and you say, that looks smaller. That looks less texture heavy than what I thought. It is. You're <laughs> not seeing things. It is just naturally how it works and you just have to rebuild it up over time. But the benefit of the texture here is just that it really is a thick pigment so we won't have to go over it two three times like we might have with the darker initial base layer and application and titanium white is typically very helpful with that you can't always use titanium white so it's not something you can always do but here it is and when you use titanium white, you desaturate pigment a lot. So you can see that I'm really working in the cadmium yellow and the cadmium red a couple more times to reinstate that saturation. And I'm just building that up towards the tops, trying to work predominantly in areas that have pre-existing foliage. That way I'm building up those highlights and I'm not taking out all of the areas that are showing through because again, that is very important. You can still see the base layer to a point. You can still see the very dark tapped in markings that we did with the dry fan brush. And all of that does add and build up to something that looks three-dimensional and has depth and feels like you can actually explore it. So do try to still incorporate that less is more mentality even here when incorporating it. Now, we do want to further diversify. So I'm going to work with a lot more of our yellow and titanium white here. We don't just want this reddish orange. We want some orange. We want some yellow. And I'm going to work now for the first time with our liner brush. Make sure it's nice and damp. That way it condenses the bristles. And I'm going to tap in individual little pieces of foliage here. From this angle, you can also see that they are quite textured. I'm using a lot of pigment very intentionally, and we do have quite a bit of titanium white in the mix, but this is something that is brighter. So you would assume it's exclusively reserved for the areas that are closest to the sky and the light. However, it is just a different uh, tree. It's a different part of the foliage is life. So this can actually be brighter throughout the piece. You don't have to exclusively use it up there. We do, of course, want to ensure that some of these leaves have recently fallen towards the ground. So we'll interject those as well. And using this brush allows us to be very intentional with our application. Now we are going to switch back to the larger flat headed brush because it's the best for mixing and we'll start creating a fairly dark gray. Then we'll interject some of our cadmium red into it and some of our ultramarine blue. It's the first time we're combining these two colors together. It's going to give us something unique yet cohesive and we're going to use this essentially for the base of all of our trees. Now to apply said trees, I'm going to go back to the liner brush because we want a very fine intentional marking. And with these, the greatest uh, piece of advice I can give you with rendering them is try to create a lot of individual markings rather than longer markings that have bends in them. The sharper the movements within the tree, the more natural it's going to look. You can have bends in your line work, but you don't want it to be overly abundant and you want it to frequently break off into different directions. I'm also ensuring that as I move upwards with my applications, that they get smaller and smaller. Your branches should get smaller as they get higher up, as they just aren't as developed as the bottom of the tree. And I'm also dodging a lot of the foliage, very specifically the foliage that is brighter, that has a lot more light because those are the areas that are protruding. They are going outwards. They are covering portions of the trunks and the branches and we just want to ensure that we intertwine the trunks and the branches in between all of the foliage. So it isn't fully in front of, it's not fully behind, it is much more natural, it gives us extra depth. You can see that we're doing this over on the right hand side as well. Some of these markings are admittedly 
a little too thin. You can really see that in the open area of sky where there's also a branch right there, but we can go back over that a couple of times, build that up. It's one of the ramifications of working with water. Your applications will be thinner, but it will let you get those more sharp and intentional markings, right? Now, once all of that's dry, we can go back in and reincorporate some foliage on top of it. So little taps, we get these extra leaves in there. It's just going to make it look a bit more integrated naturally into what we're doing. And I'm not doing an overabundance. I am going in with a color that is pre-existing within the piece. That way it doesn't stand out awkwardly and bring attention to the tree trunks and branches. Rather, it allows it all to blend naturally. And I'm bouncing around different areas of the canvas very intentionally because I want to ensure that I'm not overdoing one area and therefore we'll have to overdo another. Now from there we are going to head back to our flat headed brush and I'm going to start mixing the base color for our road. We'll do so with our ultramarine blue about an equal mixture of our Mars black then some titanium white because we don't want to work with a pure Mars black we want something that could be darker later on and we want to ensure that it does have that nice blue hue to it. As for application style, I'm starting to apply this towards the edges because when you have fresh paint, when your brush is recently made damp, you have the best opportunity to render the sharpest lines and applications. The more you use that brush, the more it will A, dry out, the more paint you will kind of have less access to, and therefore, you essentially won't be able to render as sharp and intentional of a marking if you've already used it quite a bit. So we start where we do need those intentional markings on the edges, and then we start to fill in all of that negative space on the road. And here you can see that I'm working predominantly in the general movement of the road. So if the brush strokes do show through to a point, it is directional, it's a leading line, and I like that. Though when you go over it with multiple layers, you should be able to take out the majority of those brush strokes. Here I'm just evening things a bit horizontally, but working more so with those directional strokes can be quite good if you find that you are struggling with getting rid of the actual movement movements. That said, from there we do need a brighter pigment, so we're working in a lot of a titanium white and our ultramarine blue. We'll make our fan brush nice and damp, grab that, and we'll start tapping some texture into the foreground. Now, admittedly, this is going to look quite messy for a couple of minutes. That's okay. It's a base layer, it's a foundation, it's something we are going to work on top of. But essentially right now I'm creating the brighter portions of the road, all of the areas that kind of protrude and then they catch a light. And we're tapping this on predominantly with horizontal strokes, but I will also work in some diagonal ones that again work in the general movement of the road. Now. You really want to avoid clusters that look similar. So do rotate your brush so that you have both sides. Feel free to jump around from one side to the other and just try to make it look as randomized as possible. Then we switch back to the filbert brush and we're just going to consolidate a lot of those markings towards the back and progressively allow them to separate as we get closer to us. That way it looks like we have a lot of detail that we can see in the foreground, but it gets lost in the background, right? Because the eye can't pick up on that detail so far away. And we just need to instigate that transition of detail to no detail. Then we yet again, go back to our mix here. You can see we're using the flat headed brush because it is the most ideal brush for that. We're mixing up the brightest color yet, and we're still incorporating the blue because we do want it to be cohesive. Then I'm going to my fan brush and we'll start tapping that in as well. The fan brush is still damp, so the bristles are still condensed. We are building this up much like we did the last layer and 
you're really going to get the best look if you incorporate a lot of layers in this part of the process. Here, it looks really awkward. I know that. <laughs> we just need to trust the process. There's going to be an unintuitive application that we do fairly soon that really brings it together and makes it look a lot more natural. But this is something that allows us to do that next layer. So here, doing all of those taps, still trying to consolidate the back to a point, even with that brush. And from there, we're going to start creating a much darker mix, predominantly Mars black. We still will have a hint of our titanium white and our ultramarine blue, but this is essentially going to be at least as dark as that base layer. Then we're going to grab our fan brush and we're going to ensure that it's very dry. We don't want it to be wet. We want as many active bristles as we can get. And here, as you can see, I'm going to start randomly tapping in all of these little openings. This is going to separate those larger markings that we had earlier. When it looked awkward, it looked awkward because the strokes and applications were just too large. And this is going to break them up very naturally. It's going to make different portions of the road look unique, but also consolidated to a point. And I really like this application style because it allows us to get a lot of markings that are just small to the point where we wouldn't be able to with any other brush, right? So here, I'm creating all of this randomization. It's lesser to a point towards the back of the road because of that consolidation, but we do still want it there to ensure that there is that proper movement from the foreground to the background and make it look like a singular cohesive subject. Then we're going to go in with a bit of a mid to darker value blue here. So we're using all three of our pigments and we're going to go to our liner brush. We'll start by ensuring that it is also nice and damp. And with this, we'll start creating some very intentional markings for those larger pieces of road that do protrude, catch that light. And you can do these with a little bit of an arch. If you'd like, you can do just a small horizontal application. I try to randomize it to quite a degree, but you can also create clusters within it. Something I like to keep in my mind is that the far edges of the road probably dip down a little bit so they don't catch as much light. I like to keep them a little bit darker. You can also consider how vehicles would actually affect the road and which areas are going to be lighter or darker depending upon how those vehicles would leave markings and kind of sink in different portions of the ground. So a lot of different factors that you can play with, but it's subjective. So work with it until you have something that you personally like. And here I'm adding some extra light to the background, slowly working that into the foreground, really consolidating all of the previous markings in the background. And this is something that we are slowly going to build up. You can see I just grabbed some extra titanium white. We're re-interjecting that into the back. It's still not as bright as the sky. You really don't want to overdo this. This is something that should be done gradually. This is something that you should exercise caution with but I think that it can create a really nice look and the eye does innately go to the brightest point of any piece. So it will be brought back towards that center point. So I like this quite a bit. We're going in with that same technique though, as we start to approach the middle ground. So a lot of horizontal markings. I'm avoiding the middle of the road to a point here. We are going to have the more yellowish orange line work through that, which will also be great leading lines. And it'll start to feel very finished to a point. It won't be finished. We still have a lot of leaves and things to add, but we will in the very least finally cover all of our remaining canvas. So here going in with the larger flat headed brush, trying to apply as little pressure as possible in the back, because when you apply more pressure, the bristles expand, they open up, they create a larger marking. So in the back, 
I apply next to no pressure. In the foreground, I slowly apply more and more pressure. That way it gets larger and larger as we get closer to us. Now, this mixture has a lot of yellow, so it's fairly thin. We will have to go over it with a couple of layers. Grabbing some titanium white, like I am right here, can also help quite a lot, but you don't want to overdo it. And this is something that I'm going to work in a little bit more selectively, but it's also not going to be perfect and pristine. You want to remember that there are going to be openings, there are going to be imperfections in these lines, and you want to incorporate those as well. So that's something I'm being very mindful of. I'm purposefully missing little pieces. I'm not connecting each and every stroke. I'm just trying to create something that feels unique. And that's a word I use a lot through these lessons and very intentionally so it's something that i want you to remember the importance of that said here we are mixing more of a natural orange or even a couple you can see that there's some variance in my mix and that's because we're going to start painting leaves on the ground we want these to be what's the word unique <laughs> we want them to stand out from other leaves and we can get them to do so in a variety of different ways. A, we can change the hue, we can change the value, we can change the size. So in the background, they're going to get smaller. We can also change the shape in the foreground where they're a bit larger. So if you look at the leaves in the foreground, some of them have a dip inwards. So it kind of dips down and then it comes back up. Some of them that dip occurs more towards the top in the middle. So you're creating these bridges and these arches. And then when you feel like you've diversified to the greatest degree and you can't really continue to do so, we grab a different color. Here, this one is quite a bit more yellow. You don't want to do too, too many actually yellow leaves because we don't have many in the trees incorporated yet, right? Now, it looks good towards the center because it's cohesive with the yellow in the lines. So that's predominantly where I'd recommend applying them, but you don't want them to only exist within that space. Otherwise it'll feel unnatural. So you have to put a couple throughout the road, but you just continuously add different colors, a little bit more red, a little bit more yellow, and you can build these up. Then we go in with a bit more of a very dark red, and I'm going to apply a shadow underneath a lot of the larger leaves. You can do this beforehand and then paint the leaves on top of the shadows, which can actually look really quite good. However, it does mean that you're committing to putting a leaf there, which you might not want to do, and you might not know until you can see just how all of those bright leaves work together. I'm also going to interject some additional yellow into the top because we have quite a few of those yellow leaves towards the bottom. I do want it to be nice and cohesive. <laughs> so we're just tapping that on. The brush is fairly damp, so I'm grabbing an abundance of paint to make up for how thin it will be, but I am still trying to get very small markings. These are intentional, so I'm also jumping around so that I don't accidentally create too much pattern in there. And I would also like to note that it's coming together, but you are more than welcome to make yours come together in different unique ways. Remember that painting is subjective and it's personal, and you are more than welcome to make your piece feel very personal as well. With that said, if you'd like help with the drawing process, I will have the traceable along with the reference photo, along with all of the pictures of the materials and all of that up over on Patreon. You can also get access to my eBooks, including uh, Acrylics for Beginners, which is essentially the essentials, everything you need to know about acrylic painting before you jump into your first acrylic painting. We also have an exclusive Facebook group you can access to where you can post your work and have the community, you know, see it you can have conversations it's a it's really positive space that i'm incredibly proud of and of course again you can get the traceable which will just help you get that drawing on the canvas all of the proportions correct and all of that it's also just a great way to support the channel and the link is in the video description additionally you can get the brush set which this video was made with in the description and they are entirely vegan cruelty free something I'm also very proud of. And that way you aren't second guessing your brushes, you are working with exactly what I am. That said, 
that is the lesson. I really hope you enjoyed. I hope you feel like you learned something. I hope you feel excited to go out and paint. I wish you the absolute best and I'll see you soon. So if you haven't subscribed, hit the little notification bell and there will be a new painting lesson in your inbox this fall.